What's going on here? Oh hey, what are you doing down there? What's this button for? Oh, oh shit, no wait, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. We had some really good and interesting weapon mods over the year, but it seems the best stuff was saved for last. If you are looking to stock up your armory, you will certainly like this episode. But before we take a look at this godlike arsenal, the question arises of what to use them on. Here are some suggestions. Raider Gang's Extended by Specific. This mod aims to heavily overhaul the whole Raider experience and bring way more variety to the enemies you encounter in the wastes. Sounds like an old idea, but actually this is the most endorsed mod of the last two weeks, so it must do something right. This mod adds many different new small Raider Gangs, each with their own style and also fitting to the place you encounter them. For example, near the watery parts of the game you may encounter members of the Shark Scavenger Gang. The gangs are also placed in a way which makes many areas that were lifeless and empty before way more dangerous to pass. So you will have to be on your toes wherever you decide to wander. And another definitive thing this mod does is adding over certain new raider and survivor named boss enemies to camps and outposts. And with this sets up the overall dangerousness of the Commonwealth another tick further. But if you are like me and say, bah, boring raiders are still boring, here is an enemy faction that will really blow your mind. Techno Mutants by Blah and Friends. This is not a mod about a community of muties who decided to listen to a specific type of music, but actually about super mutants who apparently decided that being just super is not enough and went full psycho cyberpunk, like Keanu Reeves. This mod is insane, it adds so many crazy new enemies, hovering mutants, rolling mutants, fucking ACST mutants, walking guns. I do not care if it's lore friendly or what, this is exactly the kind of stuff we really need to spice up this game. You should just show this mod up your PC's butthole faster than your mom, uh, no mind. This mod is great, that's what counts. Some of the weapons those new enemies have can be looted and used. And also some armor parts work for mutant followers like Strong. I'm telling you, this is an absolute win. But now the weapons, right? Well, almost. Holotape display shelves by Nihar. This is also definitely worth showing. Really nice wall shelves where you can display all the thousands of holotapes you come across on your travels. Way better than keeping them in your inventory. I mean, every gamer will instantly understand what I'm talking about. Gotta show off what you got. There are also those small shelves with only 5 slots. Those are special shelves for the Pip Boy games only. But okay, okay, there are some crazy flying super mutants and shit, we definitely need new weapons. PL14 Lebedev by Noah. This name is based on the word Lebed, which means swan, so feel free to call this weapon the Swanson Gun. The customization is quite nice for this one, some different colored laser attachments for example, and overall a very clean design. The next weapon is HKG3 Family by The Big Ledovsky. It's just one weapon, but depending on how you customize it, it can be three different ones. G3 Assault Rifle, HK51 Submachine Gun or even the PSG1 Sniper Rifle. Yep, just like the one Snake used.
So as I said, the customization here pretty much determines what kind of weapon you will have in the end. Interesting design. With the next one we get some heavy action. M249 Squad Automatic Weapon by Sayahika. A big weapon for real soldier boys, I wonder how much it weights. Would we'll love to try holding one in each arm, even if it is just for posing. The textures might not be that juicy, but the customization sure is. For example, all kinds of different ammos for all life situations. And here is the last weapon mod and definitely also the highlight. Monkey Depot Thompson Submachine Gun by Monkey Depot. Unlike a couple episodes back where we had an overhaul for the vanilla Thompson, this here is a standalone weapon and has way more customization. Here it is, just look at all the insane customization we have here, you can make it futuristic and turn it into an energy weapon, or even into a nerf gun with all kinds of funny ammo. Not very tactical, but will sure strain your enemy's nerves. <laughs> And in terms of armors, there is actually not that much this time. First something for the quiet time, cute sleepwear by Fem Shepping, Ari, Joel and Red Beetle. Pretty simple stuff you might think, but no, it's not that simple. There are also slippers. Yes, slippers. And with this, it is also the chillest mod ever created. Let's like, nominate it for mod of the year or something. The other mod, however, is serious woke business. Dead Space Rig by MyCard, DZW and Swordjern. Well, as a matter of fact, I think that Dead Space is awesome. And I always thought that the concept of showing your health on that spine meter and the holographic menus were super immersive and cool. Of course, the suit can't do any of this here, but the spine and visor glow in the dark. And besides, they somehow managed to make the spine glow red in the shadows, but in the light it turns green. Interesting textures. The exploration is going to be a bit different this time again, because it is actually a place we know well. Phase 4 – An Institute Expansion by Lucifer Diva. This is a huge add-on for the Institute, so logically we will need a much bigger nuke afterwards. I'm just kidding, of course. This is obviously for people who actually like the Institute. So with this mod it will be way bigger, like an actual underground city. Some of the new areas have terminals with additional lore regarding this expansion. There is also a specific place which allows you to install some cybernetic implants, which will give you some special abilities. This mod also adds a very boss-looking living quarters for the director, so it's almost starting to sound like we aren't nuking this place. But seriously, some of the new locations just look really nice and are worth keeping just for the sake of appeal alone. And this is it for this episode. The links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to endorse the mods you like. And holy shit, it's already the 28th. So I guess at this point I might already say Happy New Year's and we see each other in 2020. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Best new Fallout 4 mods of 2020. See you around.